Last time, we made this guy. But it was missing three very important things. One, the CEM3340 chip. This is what makes the whole thing work. Two, we need a rack for everything to, like, fit onto. And then three, arguably the most important, a power supply. Something to actually run the whole thing and give it some juice. So today, we're going to do all three of them. First, we gotta make a frame! I'm gonna make this frame fit the Eurorack standard, so if I make or buy any Eurorack modules in the future, they can just screw right in there, and it's gonna be the exact same as anything else that you could buy. It's just a lot cheaper. And I can make it look exactly how I want it to. I'm gonna rely on a laser cutter for this one. I feel like I've been leaning too heavily on my 3D printer lately, so I'm gonna pop over the laser cutter and make a little Eurorack. to actually put everything in, it's time to make a power supply. Although the Eurorack standard is like kind of iffy and not really like cleanly defined anywhere, generally you need 12 volts, negative 12 volts, and 5 volts for Eurorack modules. If you want to be able to accommodate pretty much most things, you want those three. So I need to figure out how I'm going to make a power supply that can do all three of those voltages and I'd love for them to do like up to an amp each. Or how the heck are we going to do this? So cool thing about electricity is ground is just what everyone agrees is zero volts. And all a power supply is really doing is adding a voltage differential. It's not saying that ground is zero, it's just saying that ground is going to be 12 volts fewer than the positive pin. So, if we have one power supply, and then we have another power supply, that are both at 12 volts, and then we just take the ground from one and connect it to the 12 volts of the other, something pretty cool happens. We're essentially saying that the ground of the second is now negative 12 volts. As long as this ground and this ground are not like, connected somewhere back somewhere, I think it's called an isolated power supply, as long as they're isolated, you're going to be fine and you won't let out the blue smoke. So this is how we're going to get our positive and our negative 12 volts. We're just going to take two 12 volt power supplies, connect ground from one to the positive 12 of another, and then call this negative 12. But I also need 5 volts. And this is, I think, for more like modern modules that require like a microcontroller in there for like a little screen or something. So I need that too. I'm solving that with these guys. This is a little five volt buck converter from Pololu, and it's awesome. They're a cool company and they make great little power supplies and motors and motor controllers and like all kinds of cool stuff. But this is gonna let me take the 12 volts and the ground and port it in and it'll just magically give me five volts up to like an amp on one of the output pins. So it looks something like this. And there we go. We just sip a little power off the 12 volt rail, connect it to our like actual ground, what we're calling ground, and we get a five volt pin out works for me. 
The power supplies I'm using can do 12 volts at like 5 amps or something incredibly overpowered. And the 5 volt buck converter from Palolo can do like 2 amps or something, so we're in good shape. So this is what I'm going to make in KiCad right now. right here this little thing this cost me like $70 there are two chips in here the third one's in there right now this is like 70 bucks these chips are not inexpensive and to put it into some context the op amp chip that is like actually amplifying it and sending it out this thing's like 70 cents that's crazy super expensive I'm gonna try and put audio through. This is my first test. I've never tried this before. And I'm praying to God it doesn't either explode. I'm praying to God it doesn't explode. Amp is on. All right. Let's turn it on. Okay, no smoke immediately. It went quiet. Oh, that's weird. That's floating. That is disappointing. Well, that didn't work. It really rarely works on the first time. I'm just thankful that it didn't blow up. So after a little hunting through my schematic and Look Mum's No Computers, Look Mum No Computers schematic, I found one very, very silly thing that I did, and the schematic for the op amp was just like flipped upside down. I just like had it completely upside down. So I took the chip and I lipped the pins. Hiked him around, and you know what? It just worked. I plugged it in, and bada bing bada boom, we're off to the races. So if I ever make another board like this, I'll probably flip them around. <laughs> so I don't have to make such a like silly edit, but hey, you know what? To make sure that it works and validate that my design is all good, it's nice to be able to just do something like that. that's it for this one. This was super fun to build. Uh, I think I'm probably going to do some more modules like this in the future. I'm not really into like making music very much, at least I don't think I'm very good at it. So this is all going to go to my brother Andrew. He's super into that kind of stuff, so this will go his way once I have like a fair number of modules here. Right now it's just kind of like a 
a wave generator, but you can take this and port it into a whole bunch of other stuff. I have my eye on a schematic by Oscatone, the guy who made the OK synth, and it's like a four beat sequencer thing. I think that would be super fun to build, so I'm gonna look into making that at some point in the future. I'm also working on some collabs with some other YouTubers right now, so I got some cool stuff in the works there. Pretty excited about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.